Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna answer some questions about last week's video, which was about magnetized pipe. How does the pipe get magnetized? How come the scrapyard wouldn't take those magnetized pieces? I'm also gonna show you a couple of tools that you can use to put up close to your pipe to read whether it's magnetized or if it has radiation in it. And I'm also going to weld a little bit on this truly magnetized pipe, like bad magnetized. Versus the stuff I welded in in last week's video. That didn't really give you a, a good idea of what magnetized pipe actually looks like whenever you're welding on it. For those of you that follow along, this might look a little bit familiar. This is the job that we've done a while back with six inch post and five four and a half inch horizontal rails. First off, I wanna thank the landowner for being patient with me about getting back out here to weld up this magnetized stuff. Fortunately, or unfortunately for me, laugh out loud, I didn't get a chance to weld on this real bad, ma bad magnetized stuff because the guy that was helping me, Jared, and uh, another buddy of ours was out here welding on this load of pipe that I got that was real magnetized. And so they got to enjoy most of it, but I told them to actually leave a few welds for me to come out here and make a video about magnetized pipe. I just haven't got out here in a timely fashion. So again, thank you if you're watching the landowner here. I really appreciate your patience. This was actually a last minute decision to come out here and weld on this today because I didn't have a video ready for this week because Kayla and I have been hooked up working on another course for the AROS welding website. One I'm actually really excited about. It has something to do with welding rigs. So stay tuned to the AROS welding trade school. I've thoroughly enjoyed building this course and I think most of you will enjoy it and find a lot of value in it. We will announce what it actually is next week, so stay tuned. Until then, let's talk about these couple of tools that you can get to tell whether pipe is magnetized, how magnetized it is, and whether your pipe has radiation in it or not. Okay, so this here is called a magnetism detector. I actually worked with a couple of guys whenever I was pipelining that had these on their truck because when doing rehab work, like dig up and relay or whatever, or maintenance on used pipelines that have been in the ground for a long time, they tend to be magnetized, which leads me to one of the questions that I'm gonna answer about magnetized pipe. But uh, anyway, the older guys that I worked with carried these on their truck, and pretty much what you do with this meter is you just bring it close to the pipe. See, I'm not even, I'm three inches away from it and it's already pegged out versus if we bring it away it starts to go down so that's how you can tell this stuff is super magnetized and you see now that it's been welded on the magnetism is less versus i wonder if it'll get worse down here no i guess that don't matter but like this piece hasn't been welded on that's weird, isn't it? Like down here, it gets less towards the middle of the joint, but whenever I move it closer to the end of the joint, it pegs out. Anyway, that there's a magnetism detector. The other tool is called a Geiger counter. I do not have one of those. I actually wanted to have one before I filmed this video, but since this was last minute, I haven't got one because just like everything else, there's tons of options and I didn't wanna just make a rash decision and get one that was just for like a, a hospital use, if you will. Although it probably does the same thing, but I can't know for sure. Let me know in the comments what you know. The only Geiger counter that I've been around is at the scrap yard. And what they do is they bring this little box out and they, and they wave it around your load and if it shows that it has any radiation in it or maybe a certain amount, I don't know. I don't know how they, how they gauge it. Then they actually won't let you unload that material. So the reason that I was hesitant to take those pieces in last week's video to the scrap yard was because they were magnetized and I didn't want to have them at the bottom of my scrap bin and then have my scrap bin filled up with other stuff and then get all the way to the scrap yard and then tell me that they wouldn't be able to take it. So Rather than wasting my time, I just done something with that material. But that's one thing that I learned. And that leads me to the question that some of you asked 
you said, how come the scrapyard wouldn't take those magnetized pieces? Because your scrapyard in your area does take them. Well, I was wrong. I assumed that they wouldn't. But to clear that up a little bit, there's a difference in just magnetized pipe and pipe with radiation in it. So you can have pipe that's magnetized that's not got radiation in it, I believe. I believe that's correct. If you know more than I do, please let us know in the comments. If you don't read the comment section, please go read the comment section. There is a lot to learn from those that have had way more experience than I have. I also want to take this moment to thank Kenny, a good friend of mine. He's a rig welder, uh, chases drilling rigs, and does all kinds of other welding here in the Oklahoma area. I've known him since I started rig welding back in high school. He is actually one of my role models, but he watches my videos, and he's the one that actually texted me after last, last week's video and said, hey, the scrapyard will actually take your stuff, or they should, as long as it's not hot. So hot is the slang term for having radiation in it. Another question that I wanna answer real quick is, how does the pipe get magnetized? And radiation, how does it get radiation in it? From the little Google search that I done on my way here this morning, radiation comes from natural types of uh, rock and whatnot, etc. That it, that's in the ground. So a bunch of this old used oil field pipe has been used to drill. So being in and out of the earth several times and spinning and friction against natural rocks that has radiation in it, pipe being used for drilling is what causes it to be magnetized and or get radiation in it. I hope that answers your question, those of you that, are, that were wondering about magnetized pipe. Like I said, I have a lot to learn about that. Head on down to the comment section and ask questions and read from those that are more experienced than me. All right, for real now, let's weld on this real magnetized pipe. Okay, I've welded on a couple of joints and I'm, I've been trying to find like a good example of magnetized pipe to try to connect with you as much as possible when explaining how to weld on this stuff and that was by far the worst one I've, I've got so far. And for one, you could hear it. You could hear the screeching noise and to control it, the best way I know how to explain it is to keep your rod as still as possible. Really honing in on my puddle and really controlling, being as steady as possible, holding this welding rod as close as possible without touching it and as steady as possible to just keep an arc going. No matter what that arc's trying to do, if it's trying to stick to here or stick to the bottom, it doesn't matter. I just try to hold it as steady as possible. The best luck I've had with magnetized stuff is just being aggressive as in kind of forcing it like if it's trying to go to the bottom just hold strong to the top until it stays there and then and then you saw that I just started to go up and down put a little metal on top a little on bottom a little on top a little on bottom and then once I got to this tack it started kind of going crazy again so I started going the other direction and I was able to join the two pieces of metal and really I was still fighting it more than uh, usual because this is super magnetized and based off of my experience, it would probably weld better clockwise. In other words, downhill, like the whole way, all the way around this piece of pipe. Just based off the way it was trying to treat me going this way. But anyway, I'm just, I'm just really trying to connect with you as much as possible, possible about what I do to weld magnetized pipe. All right, let's fire up again and see, see what happens here. Am 
going to try to start down here and uh, go wherever it will. See how it's going everywhere? It's going back and forth. I'm just going to try to hold steady. Okay, so it's it chose to go to the bottom one. I'm going to try to hold steady to the to the right one. And then another thing I sometimes do is I just drag it. I hold it right in the middle, and I just drag it. I drag it, and I take little bitty baby steps. So yeah, I just kind of started to drag it, and then whenever the puddle tried to stay to one side, I took a little bitty baby step back into it, and I made a little loop to the side that I needed to, to tie into. I just treat the, the craziness the same as I would a good smooth puddle. I just try to control that puddle. I try to make sure the puddle is tying into both sides, whatever that takes. In this case, I was doing little bitty circles, but then sometimes I'll even drag it way ahead to try to get a clean path, and then I'll come back up and take little bitty baby steps to give me something smooth to weld to. By dragging ahead of time, kind of dragging some metal ahead, I'm laying down some, some of this welding rod onto this pipe. That way, whenever I go back across it, I'm welding to that and not the magnetized mess. I try to stay in the puddle as much as possible that seems to help and I and I kind of try to shove that rod in there and just push it to whatever side that it's trying not to go to that's like my uh, just watching the footage watching what I was doing and thinking about what I was doing and that's kind of what I come up with just honing in on that puddle and trying to get it to do exactly what you need it to do despite all the craziness going on one thing that I thought of as I've been welding this brace is whenever I was pipeline welding I never ran into magnetized pipe, or at least nothing crazy that I remember. And so I can imagine trying to make an x-ray weld on this magnetized pipe would be tough. And with that being said, another thing I thought of to that point, and I want to ask those of you that have welded on magnetized pipe on pipeline work where the weld had to be x-rayed, does it help it or not help it whenever you're welding with a brother-in-law. I can imagine it would make it worse, but my guess would be to start, one person start on top and one person start on the bottom quarter might help. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what your experience is so the rest of us can read the comments and learn. And uh, I mean, you can't beat real world experience, but I do like talking about this stuff because um, I just believe it's helpful and I'm super curious. Since I'm not pipelining right now, I'm super curious what your experience has been with magnetized pipe and welding with a welding partner. Anyway, once you get some weld on it, like once you get one pass in it, these next passes go a little bit better because it more or less demagnetizes it once you get metal in it, I think, kind of. It's got to because it welds a lot better after you get your first pass in. So the first pass is usually ugly but I just like I've said in the past I just get it sealed up and then I go through and put my cap passes on it that way it's stronger and it looks a little better so I've got a lot of welding still yet to do but I hope this video was helpful I'm gonna weld for another hour or so hope you all have an awesome weekend don't forget to stay tuned to the a Ross welding trade school for the new course that has something to do with a welding rig that we will be announcing in next week's video Thanks again for all your support. Thanks for watching. And remember, learn something every day.